Hi everyone, welcome to the second edition of our fall video series by Pixel Federation called Talks with Experts. I'm Lenka, you probably know that, and today I have a special guest here with me. Hi Anji. Hi Lenka. He's our senior game designer for a free-to-play game Diggy's Adventure, which is a big success. You probably know that too. So how are you today? Great as ever. Thanks for being with us and sharing your knowledge. Well, I thank you for having me. In the first episode, we were talking about the importance of social media for our free-to-play games. And today we're going to dig more into the production process, more specifically into the game design. So how long have you been working as a game designer? Well, I've been working as a game designer for the past seven years. Oh, that's a quite long time. Let's jump into my first question, but before that, let me remind you that we've created a Facebook group called Free-to-Play Game Developers. So feel free to join and share your experiences with us. We want to know. So my first question is, how did you become a game designer? Well, that's a good question. So yeah, a lot of people ask this one because it's kind of it's kind of a mystery how to get into game design since it's such an ethereal thing. And uh, well, my answer is at least in the old days, which might change with uh, the coming of the modern schools actually centered around game design. It was it was a journey of um, of well a journey of love, I'd say, because it all started out with PC games. I started out playing computer games, of course, fell in love with them through and through from the bottom of my heart. And uh, as I played them, of course, I always wanted more. I've always dreamt about maybe someday I would actually make my own game. Of course, it didn't start actually start there. It, took, it was a long journey. After that, I, I got into pen and paper games. Uh, pen and paper games are very good for your imagination for the whole creative process. And I, I became a, a game master or a dungeon master as the most of them would would, uh, would know it under this term. And it's it's the guy who actually like kind of um, creates the adventures, creates the all the all the obstacles, all, all the all the conflict, the, the whole story for the for for his players, for his characters. Somebody who actually needs to needs to interact with his group, uh, needs to interact with the adventure and actually creates the whole experience. Then later I got into LARPing which is live action role playing. It's like, you know, you know those kids running around with foam swords. Yes, that was me. And, uh, and that was fun, but as, uh, as with pen and paper gaming, I very soon became an organizer. That, may, that meant somebody who actually kind of tailored the experience for the other players, somebody who, who made the adventures, somebody who wrote the scripts, somebody who wrote the characters, somebody who was kind of the master of the game, who, who influ or influenced, what would, what it would be that would take place? What would happen? What would not happen? What would be in the game? What would not? And from this background, then I actually kind of got got to know like a couple of people, and as word takes word, a handshake meets a handshake, and there I was, a game designer. So the most important thing was actually like uh, for even for the people that that kind of hired me, but for myself as well to love games, be completely enamored, but always, always think of them as interactive experiences. Think of them from the other side, not from the side of the player, but from the side of the creator. And that is a very unique perspective that you need to have as a game designer. So can we say that Dickie's Adventure is perfect for you? Actually, yeah, you could, because that is something I have very much experience with. That is tailoring stories, Tailoring puzzles, tailoring obstacles for, for players that want to engage with it on a on a rather classical level of, of a story taking place in the real world with real levels, with real characters. A lot of a lot of that stuff is very near to me, so yeah. Yeah, the characters are very real. Very real. Okay, my second question is what are the responsibilities of a game designer? Game design has own very good responsibilities, I can tell you that. But no, so okay, what what are my responsibilities or what does a game designer do? It's well game design is actually the one part that is not programming and not graphics. So it's I'd say it's the idea between. It's uh, actually pretty much it's everything you do. I like to I like and everything more or less you hmm, feel because what you see is graphic design. That's something different, and um, 
I, I would like to say uh, one, of, one of the sayings that goes around with game design, and uh, that says that game design is actually everything. So it's uh, game design is very broad because actually part of the programming is game design, part of the graphics is game design. How does it look? How does it feel? Those, those are very important things. But I am the one who comes up with the ideas of how exactly all this shit kind of look and feel and fall into place. So. I come up with the base concept of the game. What will the player do? What is what is the fun they will they will experience? What is, what are actually are the emotions they will experience? Because we work in a range of emotions <laughs> that that where we want the player to actually engage with, but it's of course not all of them. And uh, when when I kind of have this uh, base matrix, then I expand it further. What what does it mean for the mechanics? What how, what does he do in the adventure, for instance? It's digging tiles. It's solving puzzles. How do we solve those puzzles? We solve them with uh, with special tools that we actually give the player to his disposal. Those that can be anything, but it also is important that it isn't everything. So that the player has to be has to be limited, but yet has has to have the tools to his disposal. We are the ones that kind of come up with what the tools are, how we will, how we'll be using. Well, what will be the fun that will, he will be having? What is the long-term the long -term vision? Uh, where will he take his character? Well, where will he take this, his gameplay? The gameplay is king, and that is the center of a game designer's uh, core expertise. But of course, game designers are also responsible for, now, for instance, a story. If the game has a story, not every game has a story. Ours, ours does. It's fantastic. Uh, but... Um, but uh, regarding this, yes, the game designer that makes the story, he makes the quest line, he makes, uh, he actually thinks about why the quest line is uh, is important, uh, what were, what is the special gameplay elements that will be actually featured there, and so on and so on. So a game designer is the idea. He's like the middleman uh, that works it all together. When he has, when he has all this concept planned out, he goes to the programmer. They make it actually move. They make a skeleton out of it. That is functioning. Why like, uh, the character goes to places you click your mouse. Uh, people talk when they when they click on um, stuff falls into place when it's interacted with. But then this is still just code. That's just ones and zeros, and that's not very appealing, now, is it? So that's why then the, uh, the game designer goes to the graphic designer. One would tell the both designers so they would get along. Ha, nothing could be farther from the truth. Most of the enemies and stuff. Nah, I'm just kidding. So, but there, then he kind of lays out his vision to the to the graphic designer, and then they put the skeleton they they created with the programmers. Well, they kind of wrap meat and flesh around it. Most, um, and but mostly skin, so that you actually can interact with the world, that you see stuff that we want to see. That you that the menus are there when we need them. Uh, that they look pretty. That they look uh, actually. That they are good at communicating stuff we want to communicate, and uh, that the whole world that you that we want you to immerse in is a world that you actually want to be immersed. In. Uh, it's also the sound designers. Uh, the sound designers, of course, get their cues from the game designer who wants them to to have the sounds and the music in a special tone to, to complement the feelings and the emotions that he wants in the game to, to be represented. So actually, like uh, every single part of the process gets more or less through the uh, hands of the game designer. So he's the that's why we call it game design and everything because the whole one the whole project is a game and it, the whole project needs to be designed from scratch to perfection, ideally. What a game designer, isn't he? Okay, third question. You ready? <laughs> Bring it on! So, what does it take to create game content? In your case, it is uh, locations and game events, right? Right. So, more specifically in our case, uh, of course, the first thing I would like to say, it's a team effort. Uh, it's not like in, in a smaller games or in indie studios, you have like the one dude who is a game designer, probably a programmer, even like the main team cook. But, no idea. 
I would I definitely need to stress that you know, in our case it's a team of people. We actually on our game we have 12 people responsible for game design and or level design, which are very similar tasks in our, in our case. And um, since uh, and all, all, every every single one of these people is responsible for his little share of, of the work that is being done, of the facets that our game has, and uh, everybody kind of works together to create the experience that we have, uh, that we want our, our players to experience. So of course we have like vision holders, that's me because I have the glasses, so I have the best vision around, uh, and the and of course the people that that work on on uh, specialized tasks, like for instance writing the story or writing writing the uh, writing the dialogue uh, for the for the characters and designing the locations. But all right, so in our case, well, since we're a story-driven game, it starts out with the the event quest line. So all the game designers get together and brainstorm on what the event will be about. So, and of course, that's not like that's not only oh, it's going to be um, a fairy tale about puppies. We do like them, but that's that's a good start. It's definitely not the finish. So when we get a quest line about puppies, then we need to uh, then we need to like think about what we want to achieve with it. Is it like story-based content that drives the story forward? Is it uh, is it content that uh, keeps the players busy for a while? Maybe kind of engages them on, on different levels. Is is it puzzle heavy? Should it be story heavy? Uh, what is the focus? Because uh, one thing that you need to need to take care of as a game designer is to is to maintain your focus. Because if you don't do that, it's all over the place, and the player feels it is. He's not at home. He doesn't he doesn't have a good sense of flow. Uh, so that's what, that's what we maintain with a focus. When we have this focus, then of course we think about all the, all the different uh, means that we can accomplish that. That means uh, what, what puzzles we can actually put into that, put into that location, put into those events, uh, what, um, what characters there will be, what plot twists the player might experience, what, what maybe, maybe even like completely new mechanics. Is it time for a completely new mechanic? Maybe yes, maybe it's time to shake things up. So we introduce that, and of course, it needs to be uh, it needs to be in tune with the with the overall theme, with the with the puzzles that we engage, with the with the characters that we put in. It all needs to click together. It's from this perspective, it's it's a little bit of a fine art. Well, you you can't just have neon colors in a Mona Lisa, and uh, vice versa. You just can't slap Mona Lisa stick in on, on the, some um, random one. Oh no, you probably. Could. So everything's better with Mona Lisa. So yeah, uh, and then we kind of we we kind of go one level deeper, and, that, and then we create the locations that comprise this event quest line. And of course, these all are, and I would like to stress that, handcrafted, which means no automation whatsoever. Every little single location in our game, and it actually holds true for most games that are out there. Uh, are made by hand by level designers that actually craft the space that the player moves in. And it needs to be a very believable space, it needs to be something that the player instantly recognizes. So we work with we work with a lot of things that you know from real life, but yet we kind of try to subvert the expectations just a little bit so you actually have fun. So there is always something new, there is always a puzzle hiding and then awaiting you, um, rewards, loots, all that, all that jazz. And, these, this is the work of the, of, the, of, the, of the level designers that really put every tile in our game by hand. Uh, of course, it's already uh, it's already done by the graphic designers, but as, all, as said already, it's it's like a circle. So at first we come as the game designers, we tell them all right, we do a, I don't know Halloween event, which means pumpkins. We need a hell of a lot of pumpkins, big pumpkins, medium pumpkins, small pumpkins. Um, Maybe pumpkins with pumpkins on them, and maybe stuffed pumpkins put with pumpkins. And of course, graphic designers go out of their way to pumpkinize the whole stuff. And but then it comes back to us, and we're the ones responsible for like putting every single pumpkin in a pumpkin into our pumpkin room with pumpkins. So can be pumpkin. Now, every pumpkin. <laughs> very, very indeed. So that is that's pretty much pretty much the process. So it's a, it's a lot of people that work together, brainstorm out, and uh, think about every step of the way of what we want to achieve, how we want to achieve it, and most importantly, not digressing too much. Well, well there's always a little a, a little extra space for 
art, as we call it. But still, the art is in in how the every little detail that is handcrafted and especially considered by people actually makes a bigger whole. I've seen a brainstorm. A lot of ideas, a lot of opinions. And shouting, ooh boy! Dude, Many people, shouting. you know, 12 people is Yeah, yeah, you gotta get yourself heard. So my last question is, what's the most challenging for a game designer? Alright, the most challenging. The most challenging thing, I'm touched that, I uh, touched on it uh, in my previous responses, but here I'll kind of try to sum it up, is to maintain the fine balance between entertainment and challenge. Because the player wants both, even though he doesn't admit to the challenges that much. And um, then I would say sticking to your tone, or having, or having a tone, sticking to it, having a vision, and sticking to that vision, but yet try to come up with or methods or, or ways to make it actually fresh and exciting for a long period of time. Very true in free-to-play gaming, where games are not a matter of hours when you kind of get from the beginning to the end. Uh, as but when we do game as a service, uh, that needs to, that needs to have a completely different longevity, and there actually keeping the focus on your tone and coming up with fresh ideas that that kind of don't contradict the base game design. So and that is that is quite challenging. So thank you very much for our insight, Johnny. Well, it's been a pleasure. And now it's your turn, guys. We're waiting for you in the Facebook group, and the link can be found in the description below. See you there and ciao! Bye! Alright, and guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's another video coming, and you definitely don't want to miss that.